What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, your man, Stokesy Gamble, the lead Back at you with another video, and today we're doing yet another toxic tier list ranking. Oh, yeah. And the reason why I didn't do a toxic tier list ranking yesterday or the day before that, it was because I was out of town, so, you know, so, I, I, yeah, I just decided to wait to get get back home and do my tier list. And we are going to be doing a tier list ranking of all the King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring 2024 matches, uh, uh, P yeah, 2024 matches. Um, and sorry for the angles on the certain matches. It's just, I, I don't create my own tier list most of the time. And I don't know how to move them down, if that makes sense. Anyways, uh, but before we get to the actual beginning of the video, what's up, guys? Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Because number one, it's absolutely free. Number two, on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Just uh, 280 away now. And also, it'll maybe help with the YouTube algorithm, recommend the video to more people. Maybe they could join the talks. <laughs> and uh, do feel free to comment your uh, rankings of all the King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring 2024 matches uh, from the worst to the best, best uh, down below. And um, with that being said, guys, let's get ready to eat. <laughs> and I'll show you the categories first before we start ranking things. So we have best of the best, which means... They are, like, five-star matches are really close. They were uh, an amazing match. Great means it was close to getting, like, a five-stars or 4.8 stars. It's just I was expecting maybe, like, a little tiny bit more out of it. Toxic goodness means it was good. It was a solid match, you know? Uh, okay means it was, like, okay. It was 50-50 on the match. Um, didn't watch means I didn't watch it, and I'll explain that in a second. And then Toxic Trash means Dumpster Fire, the worst matches at King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring 2024. So, why I put didn't watch there is because this was live at when, at my sister's wedding. So, I missed two matches. One match I know I didn't ha uh, I didn't know happened, and one match I had to get ready for my sister's specific wedding. So that's why I missed out on some of the matches. So hopefully you guys understand. But I will eventually watch the matches later on in the year to do my big WWE 2024 pay-per-view PLE ranking. All right. Okay, so the first match of the night was the uh woman. I know you guys can't see it, but the women's tag team titles match between. J Can we have a tag team name for Jade and Bianca, please? But anyways, Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair versus Candice LeRae and Eddie Hartwell. The way and this match I didn't watch because the, the, remember when I said there was a match that I don't didn't know even happened until last minute yeah this was one of the matches so i and plus i rarely check out the pre-shows anymore because i because they triple h really doesn't do much pre-show matches anymore like the last pre-show match before this was Sami Zayn versus jd mcduna uh at crown jewel 2024 ironically well not 2024 2023 ironically another wwe pay-per-view in saudi arabia um but that's pretty much the, all the other pre-show matches i can think of really unless if i'm forgetting some uh, let me know down in the comments if i'm forgetting some oh wait the um the way versus uh asuka and Kyrie same for the women's tag titles at uh, elimination chamber anyways um next up we have the first match of the actual show and that is Liv Morgan versus Becky Lynch and you know uh this was this was good uh it wasn't amazing I was hoping for it to be amazing because I thought the build-up was quite intriguing and good but the actual match itself was good um, I'm glad Liv Morgan finally became champion again and can further the um rivalry with Rhea Ripley when she comes back with Liv Morgan holding the title and um Becky I, I love Becky don't get me wrong but 
I didn't really want her to win the battle roll, so she had a really short tile reign, so, and Liv Morgan ended up winning, but, um, yeah, this match was good, uh, had a decent in-ring action, and I liked the finish where Dominic accidentally cost, uh, Becky Lynch the match, that was definitely an interesting way to go, so, yeah, I would say it's good, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I would say it's good. Then we got the triple threat match for Sami Zayn's Intercontinental Championship with Chad Gable and Big Bronson Reed. And honestly, this might be a hot take for some people, but honestly, I thought this was the best uh, match of the night. I loved this match. I was worried going into like Sami Zayn's title run because Gunther made that title so prestigious, but Sami Zayn actually is keeping the momentum going with the IC title matches, making it a must-see event every single week with his great match with Chad Gable on Raw, and also this match to add to that as well. Had a lot of cool spots, all three competitors looked strong, and it wasn't one of those triple threat matches where they just have a one-on-one -on -one match with it and people switch. It was actually all three of them fighting each other, which I actually enjoyed. And I really uh, dig what they're doing with this evil Chad Gable and the whole entire storyline where he wants Otis to help him no matter what. So I I think that angle is really, really good. So this goes into best of the best. I loved this match and uh, it was an awesome triple threat match next up lyra valkyria versus nia Jax. so this was the time when i actually had to change my clothes and i into my like wedding clothes so and missed out on a match so it is nia Jax versus lyra valkyria and i think this match uh, i i didn't why I, I was about to say i think this match yeah i didn't even watch it my bad uh, but I did see the finish of this that I thought was pretty gnarly and a great way to end the match with Nia Jax trying to go for, I don't know what she was going for, but Lyra Valkyria breaks out of it and does uh, tries to attempt to do a sunset flip powerbomb or a powerbomb, and Nia counters and just squashes her like a bug, and then that's when she wins the... King of the, Queen of the Ring crown, and honestly, I'm not, um, I'm not that mad about uh, Nia Jax winning the uh, uh, Queen of the Ring tournament, to be honest, because I really enjoy. Surprisingly, I've really enjoyed this version of Nia Jax ever since she's came back, like late 2022. She's had a really good run so far, so yeah, I'm fine with her winning the Queen of the Ring tournament. Next up, we have Randy Orton versus Gunta. The Ring General. Uh, and this was my probably my most anticipated match of the night, I think I would like to say. And uh, this match was, I would say, great. It's not best of the best because botched finish and also, well, I don't know if it was botched. Maybe it was planned. Who knows? Uh, and also, I. Just from Gunther's banger after banger after banger with his Intercontinental Championship uh, matches, I was expecting a lot more from this match, but it was still a great match. Uh, I liked the story, how Gunther kept on targeting all of Randy's limbs, and it was very technical at the beginning. Um, uh, had a lot of close calls, which I enjoyed as well, and I really also liked uh, how Gunther kind of won this match because it protected Brandy Orton, but I didn't even catch it, but Rain when uh Gunther kicked out of Rain the RKO, Gunther chopped Randy Orton's injured leg wink wink uh and got the crucifix pin. So I thought that was a pretty smart finish, honestly. So and that was pretty unique because Gunther ever since his icy tower run, I don't think has had has won a match by roll up. He's also he's just won by a bunch of different moves in his arsenal, which I'm glad Gunther does that nowadays. Where he win, you don't know what his finisher wins, and he wins off of pretty much anything he wants to. I love that about him. Um, so that goes into great tier. And then finally, we have the main event between uh, Cody Rhodes and Logan Paul for Cody Rhodes' WWE Undisputed Championship. I know you can't see it, my bad. Uh, but this was a another great title defense. This was an even better title defense than uh, AJ Styles, in my, opponent, uh, my humble opinion. But uh, I, I do admit, 
AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes had the better crowd. I must admit, they had the better crowd. But this time around, uh, I thought Logan Paul proves... Well, actually, honestly, the matches might be equal, equal now that I think about it. Uh, but Logan Paul proves again that he can have great matches with anyone and continues with his awesome resume in the WWE. And this is what I'm so glad that they did not do this match for both championships because I would have screamed my head off. If Cody, I love Cody, and I'm glad he won the WWE Championship, but if he would have won both titles, I would have been like, what do we do now? And also, it, we also could have had match interference that causes DQ where both of them don't win the titles. That would have been incredibly stupid. But um yeah, the 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 ma- in-ring action was good. Uh protected Cody Rhodes quite a bit. If I had like a minor flaw, like a minor minor flaw, I wish Cody pinned Logan off of one crossroads because I think he should win off of three crossroads when it's actually like a big threat, like Roman Reigns or The Rock, you know, not Logan Paul or AJ Styles, you know, which luckily he did beat AJ Styles with just one crossroads. Um, but with that being said, guys, that is my officially, um, my officially, my official talk securities ranking of all the King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring PLE matches from the worst to the best. Be sure to leave your rankings down below and, uh, with that being said, guys, I'll be your next one, everybody. Peace out.